Hey guys, welcome to the lab. I'm Brian. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to do a quick video today on a update of the Azanthic project. I've had a lot of people asking questions, wanting to know how the Azanthics are doing, how many of you produced, what kind of morphs are you mixing them with, that kind of stuff. So I thought we'd touch on a little bit of it today and I've got some examples to show you of one branch of where we're taking this project. Now real quick, if you're unfamiliar with what the Azanthic project is, how it breeds, how genetics work in reptiles, uh, you can get all that info on our Crested Gecko Genetics video is a great source and also our Top 10 Crested Gecko Morph video we talk about the Azanthic. So if you have questions right off the bat, check out those videos, they'll give you more answers. The azanthic trait, we have proven it out as a simple recessive trait, 100% positively proved it out as a simple recessive trait, and we're starting to mix it in with some other morphs and get some cool combinations. So we're going to talk about one of those now, and I've got some examples for you. So to start with, this is just a basic azanthic. This is what we pretty much started this whole project with. And these are just completely patternless right off the table. Hold on. All right, got him back. This guy is really jumpy. So these guys, the basic azanthics, are just completely patternless gray animals. As you can see here, um, almost every azanthic we started this project with looked more or less just like this. Patternless gray animals, no color pigment whatsoever, totally monochrome, and you can see the white on their tails is true pure paper white. It's not cream like other geckos. The reason for that is they lack yellow pigment, so without yellow pigment, the cream color turns stark paper white. One of the goals we wanted to accomplish with this project when we started it was pinstripe azanthics. So that happened by taking animals that look just like this. This is a male that we hatched about a year and a half ago. So taking animals that look just like this and breeding them to pinstripes, we created pinstripes that were het for azanthic. You then take those and breed them back to either other hets or back to another visual azanthic, and we produced pinstripe exanthics, but like I said, most of the exanthics we started with were completely patternless. They're not all born patternless. We had several that we received from the original owner and had several ourselves that when they hatch, they've got white cream on their dorsals, just like a lot of the flames and harlequins you see, white cream on the dorsals, and that cream always fades out. In every case of every exanthic we had, by the time they're two or three months old, that cream completely fades out and you're left with patternless animals, just like this one. So, for a long time we weren't sure if, you, if it was possible to get color patterns on an azanthic. It seemed there's, for some reason, something in the azanthic gene mutes out the traditional harlequin or flame gene that causes all that cream pattern on the geckos. They, uh, they don't mix, they, the azanthic gene mutes out the harlequin gene and you always get patternless animals. I don't know why, that's just how it works. So for a while I was a little concerned that we could only make patternless azanthics, which would be kind of a bummer because then there's only so much you could do to them. You could add dalmatian spots to them, but other than that, if you can't get any pattern, you can't really make any other morphs out of them. So it kind of really limited what we could do with the azanthics. For an example, we hatched this gecko. Don't be crazy. And this one was a pinstripe when it hatched its entire dorsal. As you can see here, it's got the raised pinstripe scales all the way down the back. And when it hatched, those were all white. It looked like a normal pinstripe hatching, just an azanthic version. And as it grew, all of that color had a solid white dorsal and all of that color completely faded out into a patternless animal. Now on this one, you can see little vestiges on the very bottom near the tail that still have some white highlighting on them. And a couple of our adult breeders that we've had since the beginning have a little bit of white highlighting on them as well. You can see it really good right there. So, I mean, that gave me a little hope that the, we'd be able to get some kind of color on these geckos. And that was obviously the main goal, is to make azanthics that aren't completely patternless because as great as they are, it would get boring really fast. So this one I was very excited about when it hatched, but the color didn't stay. And that was really disappointing. I was really hoping we'd get a pinstripe azanthic. I thought we had it and the color all faded out. So that was pretty disappointing. After that one hatched and started to fade, a bit later we hatched this one. And this was the next exciting azanthic that hatched. This one, again, had a solid cream dorsal when it hatched, 
and all of that dorsal's faded away except for these dashing pinstripes you can see here. It's not a full pinstripe, and you can almost see if you look close, the sides are darker on this gecko than the back is, and the back the lighter the lighter parts, you can almost still see the markings on the dorsal. That's where it used to be cream colored when it hatched out. All of that was white cream and all of that faded away. Obviously these dashings on the pins, these dash marks on the pins did not fade away. And of course the tail color on all the Azanthics never fades away. So this one gave me any more, even more hope that we'd be able to get a full pinstripe Azanthic someday. And then uh, after this one hatched, this one was pretty exciting. And that really gave me a lot of hope that we'd be able to make Azanthic pins. After that one hatched, we finally hatched this guy. I think this one's a male. He's a little too young to tell still. But this is my absolute favorite gecko we've ever hatched. We finally got a pinstripe Azanthic. Now this one, he had a solid dorsal when he hatched. And now that he's grown up, all of that dorsal pattern is faded, but his pinstripes are still white. Now my theory on this is there's two different genes at play here. The common theory has always been that the pinstripe is strictly a physical trait that's just the raised pins going down the back, and it's really the harlequin trait that adds all the color into pinstripes. I've always thought that was wrong because you'll get pinstripes that have like an orange dorsal and most of the pinning is orange except for the bottom half is highlighted in white, and I always thought that told me that there's two different genes at play here, and this animal proves that one gene that colored in his old dorsal and part of his sides, that gene mixed with the azanthic morph gets faded out. As they grow, all of that fades away and none of that cream or orange color stays. On these guys, the white highlighting on the pins, however, does stay. Now there are two different genes at play. One of them gets affected by the azanthic gene and fades out. The other one does not. So it's, it's all trial and error. It's experimentation. If you guys watched our um, Crested Gecko Genetics video, you know I talk a lot about that, trying to figure out the different morphs and how they all work. This is the kind of stuff you've got to do to figure these kind of things out. Thanks to geckos like this, we now have a little more knowledge on how pinstripes work, how the harlequin trait works, how all of this breeds, and we were able to create an azanthic pinstripe. That gives you a little bit of an idea of one of the ways we're taking the azanthic project. We're working on a whole bunch of other different projects with the Azanthics as well. C2 Azanthics, we uh, just got some new geckos in the other day that I'm very excited to breed with the Azanthics. That'll be our next video that goes up, so a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about already. Keep an eye out for the next video after this one. We're going to introduce a brand new morph that we got here at Altitude Exotics, and I can't wait to breed those with Azanthics as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll keep you updated on other Azanthic Project bloodlines in the future. I appreciate you watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Click over here to see more videos from us. Click over here to visit our website for all things gecko and see what animals we have for sale. I really appreciate it and I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.